Two University of Wisconsin professors, one documentarian, a Wisconsin superdelegate, a student activist, and a congresswoman clashed with protesters Wednesday night in a panel designed to address key issues in the upcoming election. Taking questions from a moderator from Project Euthanize, the panelists spoke about health care, the state of the U.S. economy, including the bailout plan. And if you look at that original proposal for President Bush, it was three pages long, literally three pages long. And it was, it, as Representative Baldwin said, it's exactly right, it literally was a blank check. No accountability, no oversight. Uh, it was really a, a, a very scary document of what the President was, was asking for. Just focus on just Wall Street and not take in the rest of the country is very foolish. We're all complicit in this. Banks were making bad decisions on who they were lending to, and consumers were making bad decisions on what they were spending, what they were saving, and what kind of mortgage they were taking out. Opinions on the panel varied slightly, but clashed with the members of CAN and ISO when they entered and started heckling the panelists. I'm actually presenting to the Federal Reserve Board in about a month. Look, guys, we're having a panel, and then afterwards you'll have your time to talk. So just please respect that, or we're going to have to ask you to leave. Like, the protests are fine. We're not disagreeing with it, but we have a. Look, 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 look. We have a panel. We have you. We after the panel, everyone's welcome. That's how it's going to work. No, you can't get. Members of CAN and ISO scheduled a protest to the $700 billion bailout plan, particularly Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin's vote in favor of the plan. After picketing outside Memorial Union, about 15 members moved to Trip Commons to argue with Baldwin about where the $700 billion should have gone. If our Representative Baldwin's argument for this bailout is that she's concerned about student loans, I guess I wonder why $700 billion couldn't be put directly towards student loans instead of going to the Wall Street investors who have profited off of the interest that we're paying on our predatory student loans. Now that the government is the largest mortgage holder in the entire world, I wonder why we're talking about maybe possibly renegotiating some mortgages in the future instead of actually putting a freeze on all foreclosures as people are losing their homes. You heard my earlier explanation. You said, why are we nationalizing all the risk and none of the profit? We built in provisions after we rejected the president's proposal that does indeed give us a ta the taxpayers a stake in the possible future success of these entities. Of this are, crash? Um, of the entities that are given government assistance, taxpayer dollars. The panelists urge youth to stay active in politics aside from voting, and Professor Kanan even thanked the protesters from Campus Anti-War Network and International Socialist Organization for coming out and voicing their conflicting views. It is important, uh, but it's also important that those young people remain active. If they just come in for the moment and leave, then Obama can win, and it'll be a moment, and people will talk about the role of the youth vote, but What's really key for a major shift in politics is if you then grow old as a Democrat. And that could be a fundamental change in politics. 